honor and to bow down before you, Lord. God, that we take time to honor your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for being here today. You heard one pastor say, you shouldn't thank the congregation for coming to church. <laughs> That's where they should be. But I want to thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you for all of you that have filled in, and not just filled in, but just preached the word and touched the congregation while I was out. And I hear about all the great reports and all the great things that the Lord did. And I'm so blessed with Sister Mary Ann in the house and preaching the word and, and Brother Raymond. And I was telling my son about Brother Raymond and Sister Mary Ann and, and Brother Alvin. And he said, wow, Mama. I said, yeah, but that ain't all. I got Sidney and Sophie and I got Daddy. I got them all. Amen. So they had all wish to get all the You know, they all have the different giftings and gift, the giftings and anointing on their life. And I just want to say thank, thank you so much. Thank you, baby. Amen. I told you the other day, thank you for stepping up to the plate. Uh, you know, and just fulfilling uh, what I knew was in him all the time. Yeah. And uh, I honor him today. And I honor my three grandchildren. And, uh, you know, I didn't ever believe that when they got grown, they'd be here with me in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, more important, leading me into worship. Amen. And I don't take that lightly. And I just want to say thank you. And thank you, babies, for spending all your nights over here. And, Fixing all this for Danny, I'm just overwhelmed because I Amen. came in and saw all the beauty and how all the church looks. It's Christine and, and whoever else has helped with it. I don't know who else has helped with it, but isn't the church beautiful? Oh, yeah. I mean, from the front to the back, and you'll see that tonight. Don't, don't stay out tonight. Come and be here. We're going to have the Christmas service, and, and uh, the girls have been practicing. In fact, uh, the law came by one night just to check on them. <laughs> I mean, they were late here, 4.30 in the morning. What were they doing? Practicing. Amen. I mean, practicing. Yeah. Uh, getting ready for the service tonight and being here every night and practicing and preparing their hearts and lives yeah. to, and preparing the youth tonight to sing and to worship. And then we're going to have communion tonight. Then we're going to go back in the back and have food and fellowship. Amen. Now, you don't want to miss tonight's service. Amen. 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 Now, see, I haven't been here with you, so I can just take a few minutes to talk before I preach. And uh, thank all the ladies for all the things you did at the Christmas Bazaar. I know you worked hard, tirelessly and endlessly. And I appreciate everything that this church does. I'm blessed and honored to be your pastor. I say that with all the feeling in my heart that I'm honored to be your so much. You know, I want to just obey God what I want to do. Uh, so I have to change that. I started to say I'm so much going to preach a Christmas message. But no, I just want to preach what the Lord wants. Amen. And since Tuesday, I've been sitting in the chair. I, I have two more days of this antibody, and I'll be so glad to be free of this stuff. This is a, this is a very tiresome thing. And I'll be so glad to be rid of it. And I was sitting in the chair because it just makes you so weak and you can't hardly do a thing to just sit in the bed or lay in the chair. That's all you can do. And so I, I was sitting in the chair praying, God, I, what do I, what do you want me to preach on Sunday morning? And, and the Lord spoke to me as clear as I've ever heard him preach or say anything to me at all. And I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 32. And brothers, I know you're recording this message because I believe we make, make some CDs because there are some people here that are not here this morning that I believe they need to hear it as well as those that are here in the service. And I always say that because I know what the Lord's going to say and I know that he's going to speak to us this morning. So open your hearts and be ready for the word of God. You'll stand in honor of his word. Genesis 32. I want to begin in verse 22 through verse 32. And I question God. God, now we know it's Christmas and usually people preach about your birth. And about the rejoicing, and we already know that. You're saved. You know he came. He's not a baby in a manger. 
He's not a baby in a manger, I said. And, and he, he is the risen Lord. He's at the Father's right hand. And he's there because he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so I know people want to keep him in the manger, but he's not in the manger. It's all right to read about him. It's all right to talk about him. But he set us free. That's what he came to do, set us free. And he wants us totally free from every addiction, every stronghold, every yoke, every bondage, anything. He didn't come to die so you could keep on holding on to your stuff. He came so you could be free. Amen? He, he came so we could be free. And if you're free, that means you're free indeed. That means you shake off the stuff and take off the heavy loads and, and have a shout and spell and have joy in your heart. Amen? Joy unspeakable, like they sang about here this morning. Joy unspeakable. And, and I want to preach about Jabok, a place of total surrender. Jabok. A place of total surrender. If you ever want to look at anybody's life, look at Jacob. Because don't go that, oh, woe is me. <laughs> uh, boy, I failed God. I've let God down. Have it we all. And all you have to do is look at Jacob's life and understand that Jacob was Jacob. But his life was transformed. Because when he met God, he became Israel. And he was well off enough that God said, I've changed Jacob completely. And it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, when God talks about the past, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow. Jacob. You mean Jacob, that surplanter? You mean that heel grabber? You mean that liar? You, you mean that deceiver? Yeah. Yeah, that's before he met God. And after he met him, he was transformed. And so he had to have a J-Bock experience. And Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. And you have to have a J-Bock experience before you can get where God wants you to be. Every one of us have to go to a J-Bock. So I'm going to try to preach that if I can get there and read the scripture this morning. Let's begin in verse 20, 21. Let's begin in verse 21. So, they, so when the present over before him and himself lodged that night in the camp. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thy blessing. Boy, wouldn't that be awesome if that was our prayer today. We're not going to let you go, God, until you bless us. Amen. And he said unto him, Why, what, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Now, don't misunderstand that God lost his mind right there, that he didn't know who he was. That's not it at all. What, what he was saying was, Jacob, I want you to recognize who you were, but after this experience, you're going to know who you are. <laughs> and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thy power with God and with men and has prevailed. Wow. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Oh my God. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the holy of the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he cut the hollow of Jacob's thigh oh. in the sinew that shrank. Yeah. Now that verse 31 intrigues me. <laughs> it says, and as he passed over Penel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon him. Oh. Upon his thigh. 
There goes limping Jacob. Yeah. You can be seated if you can. I don't know if you're going to be able to stay in the seat or not, Dennis, sweetie. I don't know if I can be able to contain all of that, the truth. I hope I can't contain it, praise God. Hallelujah. Because there's something about seeing God for yourself that causes you forever to be changed and transformed in His presence. How do you know that? Because it happened to Jacob. Oh, there are Bible scholars that say, oh, oh, you, you're really assuming a lot that Jacob's thigh was touched and he lived on it for all of his life. Oh, they say it didn't happen. Well, really, the Bible says when God touched him, he limped on that leg. You know why? So he could say, I was wounded, but I got victory, praise God. I was wounded, but I got victory. The reason why you're going through the stuff you're going through is not so you can have a pity party. It's so that you can tell people I was touched and I was wounded, but I am a whole by the hand of God. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm going to come back to that leap, uh, limping in a few minutes because in that limping uh, represents that, hey, I have been touched by the hand of God and I was dead, but I ain't there now. Oh, hallelujah. Jacob is that place where Jacob wrestled with God. It's where he made a total surrender to him. It's, it's where he got his new character and his new name. It's, it's where he cast down idols. And he got his, he won his greatest victory at Jabok. At Jabok, that place of total surrender. Now, I want to just preach to us this morning because I believe that every one of us either are dealing with addictions or habits or yokes or bondages. Hey, Sister Braswell, I'm in touch by the hand of God, but somehow I can't seem to get rid of this one thing in my life. But you need a Jabok experience. I said you need a Jabok experience. You need to go where God is at. Uh, uh, you need to see God for yourself. Uh, because in that Jabok experience, uh, you can't help but totally surrender every issue to God. You can't see God and be the same. I said you can't see God and be the same. You're forever transformed. Jabok means a place of crossing over. It stands for struggles. To empty out, to pour out. There are two other crossings that you and I must have. The Red Sea crossing, which is, is the Red Sea of our life, where we surrender everything to God. We come to Him, we get saved. It's a Red Sea experience. It's a crossing over because you have to make up your mind, I'm coming to God. I'm surrendering my life to God. And then there's the Jordan River experience. That is when I get committed to God, I'm sanctified. I go down in the Jordan River and I throw away everything and give it to God. But I still got to have a crossing over Jim Mark experience where I cross over from all of those things I'm struggling with and be poured out in His presence. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Pastor, I, I, I don't know if I can get as excited as you are. You will. When you understand that J-Bock is the place you've got to go to in order to see God face to face. I mean, it's a place of absolute surrender. I want to speak to people here today. Have you ever felt the Lord's just presence? Absolutely. Have you ever got the victory on Sunday? Huh. And Monday morning the devil got you? Yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. Yes. I must be the only one in the house. Oh. Have you had the victory on Sunday? Felt the glory come down on you and Monday morning the devil got you? Yeah. See, it just proves that you're human. Yeah. That you need a total surrender somewhere. There's got to be a J-Bot. Now see, I don't believe that you're going to act the same way all your life when you come to the cavern of God. There, there are people that deal with depression. There are people that deal with... Uh, and the Lord reminded me of this. Remember that message I preached on, uh, uh, on being uh, enablers to people? Come on. Come on. If you forgot it, I'll help you remember it. People in the house enable people to act the way they act. Oh, my God. 
poor old thing. I know that to be like that in that way. Get the victory. Oh, yeah. I said, I said, get the victory in oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no time for people to keep on paying you. It's time to grow up. It's time to have a Jaybox experience where you surrender every issue to God. That don't mean that you don't have compassion for people. That don't mean you don't love people. But my God, how long are you going to be a baby with a pacifier in your house? I mean, it's time to grow up and have a Jaybox experience and total surrender to God. I mean, Jaybox is an absolute surrender to God. That means quit enabling people. And the Lord spoke to me again last night to tell people in this house, quit enabling people to act the way they act. Oh, honey, I, I know how it is. I feel sorry for you. Grow up. I'm sorry. Pass you back, please, God. Grow up. Grow up. Quit acting immature. Get pounded and fussy because you didn't, nobody didn't do what you wanted them to do. I mean, if you're going to be an immature baby, we're going to put you in the nursery. <laughs> the nursery is where they whine and ah, scream and have fits and pitch fits. But mature Christians say, my God, God's got greater and bigger and better things. And I've crossed over j Bob, and I don't intend to stay there. I'm trying to come to where Jacob was at before I go with your brother. I mean, if you just read about Jacob, you understand his life. I mean, he was the heel grabber in the womb. I mean, he was trying to make his way in the womb. I mean, he was heel grabbing Esau. And he said, I'm going to have my stuff. In the womb. He was a heel grabber. When he came out, he became a liar. And a deceiver. Because he stole the birthright that belonged to Esau. He lied to his father. He listened to his carnal mother. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a family in major problems. I mean, one mother loves one son more than she loves the other. And Jacob loves Esau. Listen to me. <laughs> Quit your favoritism to your children. Yeah. Mama, you birthed them all. Come on now. Some might not act like you want them to act. Some might not be as sweet as some others Come are. On, man. But if they're your children, you love them all. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I just thought I'd throw that in there. I mean, we've all failed God. We've all let God down. But we love our children. Yes. And, and the problem is that Rachel, Rachel loved Jacob so much until she set up the plan for Jacob. Understand, hear me good. If, you, if you're a mother in this house, or a grandmother, you shouldn't be setting up plans for your children to act ungodly, unholy, unrighteous, and act like a heathen. Well, it's quiet in here. Anyway. <laughs> children need to understand the authority figure. I couldn't help it the other day on Facebook. I just, sometimes I just want to explode. I just want to preach my mind. But I don't. But I couldn't help it. The other day on Facebook, we had a thing on there, and it said, Grandmothers were made to spoil the grandchildren. And I said, No, they weren't. Grandmothers need to grow up. That's right, come on. Because they're rotten to the core of the head. Couldn't help it, it just came on me. I mean, we're not destined to make our grandchildren naughty, ugly, and disrespectful. Now, mom and daddy didn't let me do it. And I know your mom and daddy didn't let you do it. So why do we have this thinking that when we get little children in the house, we're supposed to spoil them and let them do what we didn't do? Oh, Lord, it's so quiet this Christmas. Quiet as I could be in the house. 
Not even a mouse is stirring. <laughs> I bet the mouses are running right now. <laughs> Why is it that we don't take the gift God has given us and say to them, you can't do that? It's not going to kill them to spank them. In fact, I love that scripture. I didn't like it when Mama spanked me. I wish she'd have read that scripture. She did. It didn't do no good. Uh, it, it, that scripture where it says, if they, if they cry as if they're dying, they're not going to die. Mama believed in that. She won't die. She'll live. <laughs> Thank God I didn't get that many, but I got enough. Some people won't never spank their children because they think they're too old. Let me just tell you, if you're in rebellion, you need it broken off your life. And you'll thank God one day when you get old enough that you're not in rebellion against parents and against God Almighty. Because what rebellion does is it sets up in your heart and when you get in the automobile at 16 and the police draws you over because you're going 90 instead of 60, rebellion kicks in. It'll kick in all you wanted to, honey, but it'll write about $130 instead of five. Yeah, more than that, I should. Rebellion is, is a thing that is being in the heart of children, but it has to be corrected. You can't let children have their way. Did you understand that? That God won't let us have everything we want. Because we're bent in rebellion. And if we stay in rebellion, we'll never serve God. But God has to bring us to a place. Well, we surrender everything. Yeah. I'm going to come back to myself. Maybe we'll get more loud. <laughs> and have you ever failed God on Monday? Yeah. Yeah, because I believed I had such victory on Sunday. I mean, I felt my muscles yeah. just stretching. Come hey, come on, devil. I dare you. And he came with something I didn't even know he was coming with, and I fell and yeah. fell, and I'm on the floor yeah. crying. Come on. And I'm saying, dear God, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. It's because we understand that, that we don't keep an account of the spirit and stay where we need to stay in the spirit. We get weary, get worn down, we get heated batteries, we get fatigued, we get depressed. But listen to me, church, but we're going to rise up and cross over Jabok. And we're going to have victory. Now, Jacob is one of those that after he listened to his mom, his mom said, oh, go ahead and leave and it'll be all right. Did you know he was gone 20 years before he returned back home again? I want to talk about what happened to Jacob between the time he left and the time he came back to the place of Jacob. Jacob has had an experience with God. Yes, he has. God meets him at Bethel. At Bethel, I want to talk about that because I'm not calling it a religious experience, but so many people have religious experiences. Amen. Come on. Instead of a spiritual experience. Amen. A religious spirit experience says, I go to church, I pay the tithe, I give to God, I do what I'm supposed to do on Sunday. That's religiosity. Come on, man. But a spiritual encounter with God. Says, I can't wait to get back to the house of God. I'm not debating whether I'm coming back. I am going to be back. A religious experience says, I got everything I wanted this morning from Sister Rather when she preached about Jabot. I got Christmas and it's on the way and it's here and I'm going to spend time. Well, understand the reason why we called off Friday night service. Me and Brother Bradley talked about it in depth. And I, I, I just want to say to you, we did it only because. I didn't feel like that nobody would really would come, but maybe 15 or that most, that many. Because they're family members and you're buying Christmas gifts and you're involved in that. Isn't it amazing how people can go anywhere they want to go? And do anything they want to do and spend their money for anything they want to spend it on. Well, they can't come to the house of God. But I believe somewhere in their life they're going to have to have a j -Bot experience. Don't we go from when they start calling out on Facebook and start saying, Oh God, I don't know what's happening in my body. Well, God brings people down on their knees sometimes so he can save them and deliver them from their own sins. A religious experience and not a spiritual experience. 
a religious experience goes through the routines of stuff. The spiritual experience. Fall on your knees. Now, I know I can't sing. Only if the anointing gets on me. I do pretty good. That what the anointing just in. <laughs> That's just me trying to sing what so you were singing. But you're going to fall on your knees when you have a spiritual experience. Because no man can stand in the presence of the king. I mean, it's just something about seeing him fall dead. I feel like a dead man. It's something about Isaiah said, when I saw the Lord high lifted up, he said, woe is me, for I'm a man with unclean lips in the midst of unclean people. Uh, there's something about seeing the Lord uh, that you can't have one eye open and one eye closed uh, because there's something about his presence uh, that causes you to fall prostrate in the midst of his glory and his presence. Uh, so you don't need a religious experience, you need a spiritual experience. Spiritual experience says I turned the world upside down. I went outside the doors. God delivered me. I told everybody were my friends. I told them what God done for me. Yeah. Did you notice that people that really have a spiritual experience wow. don't worry about somebody standing next to them that are dead and carnal? Oh, God. Let's say, dear God, I don't know if you know it or not, but you know how I used to be. God just have to tell you what happened to you. Yeah. I just want to tell you, God came down, He saved me, He delivered me. You'll be with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Even sitting in the restaurants, you'd get embarrassed. Oh, Some people do. Yeah. But my God, they need the joy of the Lord on them. Right. They need what God gives us. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> so what will happen to you when you have a spiritual experience is things start changing in your life. Mm -hmm. The old man starts dying. Oh, yeah. Now, I like that song, The Old Man is Dead, but, you know, I have to say this. <laughs> The old men don't die very long. <laughs> He'll stay dead very long. He starts rising right back up. Have you noticed that? If you don't pray, if you don't fast, if you don't seek God, that old man starts rising right back up. I, I mean, I thought he was dead. He was. As long as you was in God's presence. But as soon sure as you hit that pavement out there, somebody is going to go... <laughs> And you're going to have to say, hallelujah. <laughs> Instead of, do it again. Just do it one more time. <laughs> See, we're all human. See, everybody's guilty because I can lose your faith. Every one of us are guilty. Grandma and Grandpa is out for a stroll today. I mean, I wish they'd get off the road. Am I hitting anybody? I know I haven't been hitting myself by the Lord all this week. I just tell you right now, if everybody loves me like they love they do they can't <laughs> Pity parties and pity parties. I don't know nobody in this church I don't love. I love every one of you. It's just some people a little bit more love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some are more touchable. Some are like prickly weeds. Don't touch me. And then there are others just say, uh. You see it on their forehead, uh. You know, so I'm a hugger. I'm, I'm just a, I'm a hugger. I love to hug people. I love to make them know that God loves them and that God cares about them. And, and, and I'm not going through things like some are going through. My heart is bleeding this morning for my precious friend, uh, Sister Paula Johns, the pastor's wife at, at the Rain Church in Warner Robinson. Uh, she had another picture of Brother Johns last night, and I was, I was sitting in the chair, and I was just weeping. And I said, oh, God, oh, Brother Johns, I just miss you so bad. And she put on there, she said, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was going to get to hug him for Christmas, and I just broke down again. And I said, Sister Paula, I don't even understand where you're at. I haven't lost a brother. I, I haven't lost a husband. I don't understand that. But you know, you know what Brother Clyde would say, that God is your ultimate source. He's your strength. And she put back, yeah, I know that. But this is the darkest night of my life. Now she wanted to say yes to Jay Bob. You got to cross on over this. Just got to have victory because it's going to be worth it when we get home. Oh, 
Amen. See, there are so many I've lost this year, friends in the ministry, and I've cried and wept over them. And started the other day, put on Facebook all the different ones just to honor them. And I said, nope, not going to do it because I'll start from Brother Joe Q. Smith and I'll start bowling and I will never stop. Because he was such a man of God and a man of the word and such a dear friend. And every time I'd call him, he'd say, he'd never say, Sister Bradford, this is my opinion. Never. He'd say, well, Sister Bradford, this is what the Word of God says. He'd quote the Word of God. He was a mentor in my life, and he was a counselor for me and a strength for my life, and I miss him. So many others. But you cannot base your salvation on someone else. Amen. See, there are church members that base their salvation on a pastor. You can't base it on a pastor. Because they're human. We're human and we fail. But there's one that never fails. His name is Jesus Christ. I just, I, I tell you, I just feel so honored when you love me like you do and I, and when you clap. And I, I was laying in the bed the other night when I got home after last Sunday. And I said, Dear God, I just, I, I, pride would enter into my heart quickly if I let it go there because just the people standing up and clapping hands and all that. And I'm saying, God, I would have never believed that people would have done that for me. Never. But understand that I love you for that. But I want you to honor him. Amen. I want you to have not a religious experience, but a spiritual encounter. Amen. Jacob did have a religious experience at Bethel. And I believe he had a touch of a spiritual experience. You can have visions and dreams and you can do all those things. But if you don't stay in touch with God, you'll only have a religious experience. That's why I warn people, be careful about who you listen to, who you watch on television. Uh, because if you notice, uh, so many people have got dreams and visions and they talk about this flying over yonder and that flying there and, and all that stuff and they start trying to explain it and and if your spirit is not bearing witness with it, you need to leave it alone. Oh, yeah. Did you hear what I said? Because you'll be drowning in that religious experience I have. A spiritual experience speaks volumes into your life. Causes you to see God as you've never seen Him before. So j is a place of crossing over. It's a place where you leave the struggles behind. Oh, yeah. It's a place where you surrender everything to God and say, God, I can't do this. I must give it to you. j is a place not only of crossing over and total surrender. It's not only a place where religion gives way to supernatural spiritual encounters. But it's a place where there is an open heaven that you can see and hear things that you've never experienced before. Before you go to j -Bock, before you go to j -Bock, you cannot experience those things. To weigh it down, to burden down, to load it down and stuff. Now, I'll just speak from my experience. When I'm really where I need to be with God, and I've really been in His presence, I can have that ultimate open heaven. I don't care what time it is. I don't care where I'm at. If it's on the floor. If it's in the study. If it's in the living room. If i got to open heaven. I'll stay there in his presence. Been there two or three hours at a time. Understand. It's not an everyday thing. I, I wish I could say that. It's not. I wish, I wish it was an everyday thing. It's not. But when you cross j oh, yeah. and you've got in God's presence, you can have an open heaven yeah. in God's anointed presence yeah. and the things that trouble you oh, my God. won't trouble you anymore. Oh, my God. I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget this. Absolute surrender. I put here, desperation puts you at j -Bock. Desperation puts you at j -Bock. I asked you last Sunday night when our son called and he asked about mom. I'm praying and I'm fasting in this isolation part. 
Mom, will you, will you ask the congregation to help me to pray? Mm -hmm. That on the 16th, that, that something that I prayed about will happen. He didn't tell me what it was. He didn't, he didn't even say what it was. He just said, Mom, will you, will you agree with me in, in prayer that God will transform it, change it, do what needs to be done? I texted Kenny and I told Kenny and Kenny started crying on the phone. He said, Mom, what, what do you think it is? I said, I don't know. I don't know. He said, I'll pray, Mama. I, I saw you put it on the Facebook and, and put it on a line where there are prayer warriors praying. And, and a young lady that was 32 who died uh, about a month ago, Leanne Thatcher, and I knew her, and she died. And, and her mom, her mom, listen to me, her mom did, had no idea that that she was bound in alcohol and had been drinking for 10 years and the kidney level stopped the liver stopped all stopped and prayer warriors started praying and for a month and a half they prayed and Leanne came up out of a coma and came up and got up and stood up and stayed living for a week after that and then she died and they had prayer going on for Leanne. And understand that Leanne made her heart right with God because she had been away from the Lord. And, and Kenny said, Mama, I just take Sister uh, Griffin and Sister Sandy, and I told her. And so they had Facebook going. And I didn't hear from Jeffrey on the 16th. I hadn't heard from him yet. And so I'm wondering. I was laying in the bed last night, and I could not sleep. I tossed and turned, and on Saturday night, it seems like the devil just gets a hold of me, and I can't rest at all. I don't think I got maybe an hour of sleep all night long. But I started praying for Jeffrey, and I started crying. And I said, God, if, if it was that his request be to come home, and I'm sure that probably was one of the things, and 16th came, and he's gone, and he's not out. Lord, please touch his depression. Please touch him to hold on and cross over the J-Box. And I'm going to tell him that when he calls me, you got to cross over to the J-Box, son. Because until they let you go, you're going to be there. Understand? In prison, you, you're there until they let you go. Amen. I know God can work a miracle. Yes. I know he can. That's why we've been praying. But, but understand, that is one of the things that troubles my mind. How is my son doing? In the cold weather, is he warm enough? Is he getting enough to eat? When he's sick, are they really taking care of him? Is there any way I can get a hold of him and hug him? No, in isolation, he's been there now for a month and a half, and, and his son came from uh, Missouri and had, saw him in about a year and a half, and so when he gets there, Corey doesn't know that he's going to be behind the window, so he wants to hug his dad, and he can't, so it's a very emotional thing. And so I'm struggling with that. When I go see him Tuesday, I'm going to have to... Or Wednesday, I'm going to have to look through the glass. And I want to wrap my son up, and I want to hold him and tell him, son, it's going to be all right. God still is God. There are just James Box in our lives. There are crises, desperations in our lives that we come to that we must cross James Box. If we don't cross James Box, cross over, empty out, be poured out, we will allow the enemy to destroy our minds. I heard Jason Raymond say this morning, be aware that the devil is real. Amen. He said preachers are not preaching anymore about the devil. Oh, well, understand the devil is real. Yeah. He's not some little tiny something. He is a real yeah. force to be dealt with. Yeah. And he doesn't want us to make it. But you've got to come to a place in your life where you say, God, I'm going to empty myself out here. I believe that Jacob did that so, somewhat at Bethel. But you have to question Jacob and say, when he got up, he already in his mind, he had sent over gifts because he heard that Esau was coming with 400 men. And so he sends the caravan to take the gifts ahead of time. And get this, I didn't see this until yesterday when I was studying this again. It said, and in, and in that night, and the Spirit said, stop and look at it. In that, in that night, that night, that same night, Jacob was already planning his schemes. 
still after a Bethel experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. Because what he did was he sent the gifts ahead of time. Yeah. And then he put his wives over the brook yeah. on the other side. Yeah. He, he was still playing things. <laughs> but when he crossed over Jabbok, God got a hold of him right there. All of Jacob's plans ceased. I said, it ceased. How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to work my way? What am I going to do to get my way? How am I going to have a fit to get my way? No, Jacob is saying, I'm fishing to have an experience right here at Jacob. And that's what happened to him. At Jacob, a man came walking in the night. I mean, a man come walking in the night. Can you imagine when Jacob laying down and all of a sudden the man says, I'm here. And all of a sudden he starts having a wrestling match. Oh, dear God. Wouldn't it be awesome between now and church that you had a wrestling match? Wouldn't it be awesome if some of you got slain today and you didn't get go home and you still be able to come back? I've already asked God. I don't mind staying here all afternoon. I don't mind wrestling with the Lord today. It was God. It was an angel of God. It was an angel of God. Because that angel of God wrestled with Jacob. Listen to this. Jacob started wrestling. And wrestling. And wrestling. And the day's breaking. And the angel said, let me go. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling or not. Let me go. And he said, no, 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 no. I haven't got you now. And I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Hey, hey, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Oh, something will happen to people if they'll have a shave off experience. And they say to God, God, I'm not letting you go until you give me what I got. Is that place where the angel wrestles with Jacob? Woo! Dear God, he said, let me go the day breaks. No, I'm not letting you go. Until you bless me. Oh my God, yeah. Have you ever been in that wrestling match with God? And the phone rung. Oh yeah. And the devil said, It's something important. It's an emergency. You need to answer it. And let me just tell you what it was. A telemarketer. <laughs> what the devil did was got you distracted from the jaywalk. He got you distracted from the wrestling match. You can just get a hold of this right here. Just get a hold of him. I'm not letting you go until you bless him. Got to have it, God. Got to have it. It's a crossing over. It's a pouring out. Lord, I grab a hold of you and I'm not letting you go. And then Jaybok is where he literally had a transformation. How do you know that? Because the angel of God said, let me go. And he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And he wouldn't let him go. So he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. Yeah. And Jacob goes in like this at Jabok. But he comes out like this. Uh. <laughs> he goes to live it. Yeah. Jacob, what's your problem? <laughs> oh, you want to really know? <laughs> I was at Jabok. And I had a pouring out. And the angel of God, the angel of God came to where I was at. It caused a limp in my leg so that I wouldn't forget where I came from. <laughs> Jacob is forever changed from Jacob to Israel. God said, what is your name? Don't you know Jacob was saying, oh dear God, I don't remember that name. Has God ever said that to you? What is your name? Oh God, please don't make me answer that. I was a drug addict. I was alcoholic. I was doing this. I was doing that. God, please don't. And God says, when you know who you really are, then you can know who I really am. Yeah. Now I'm going to just tell you the truth. I can have myself stop here today. <laughs> because I understand that. <laughs> that J-Bob, when you understand who you are, you understand who you are. 
that God will transform your place to an open heaven. Because he said, Jacob, you wrestled with God and man and have prevailed. And your name shall be called Israel. No longer Jacob, but Israel. For you are prince with man and with God. Isn't that awesome when you can have that kind of experience? And you were an old hill grabber and a deceiver. But once you have crossed your involved, you become Israel. But with God and with man, and God doesn't withhold his blessings from you in the open heaven. That's why some people can walk in the favor of God in an open heaven because they remember where they came from. And others can't walk in it because pride enters them and they swell up and say, look what I did. But if you've ever been touched by the hand of God and he calls the limp in you. Oh, I wish I had time to talk about that limp. Because that limp, you'll drag. You'll drag it. And I only tell you what I've been through so you can understand. I ain't dragging it for a pity party. I'm dragging it so you can understand how I came through and you came through. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and you, can get, you can get caught up in that stuff. And, and people around you can give you a pity party and throw a party and blow balloons and put you a cake out there. And I wasn't going there, but I am. I just want you to listen to my sad, 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 sad story. And you've told them 50 dozen times. When, 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 when are you going to cross over Jabbok? Makes a good story. I'm, I'm not putting down what you've been through. You understand that? You understand, Pastor? I'm not putting you down what you've been through. But you can't have a continuous speed party with a cake and balloons all the rest of your life. There's got to be some dancing. There's got to be some joy in you. There's got to be some hard in you. Hallelujah. There's got to be some abnormal or normal stuff. Some spirit in you. <laughs> Cross over. Cross over. Yeah. Yeah, I believe I will, Brother Alvin. Hallelujah. Just gave you the truth, I feel the Holy Ghost in you. I love you. I'm, I'm sorry about what you've been through. But get over it. Go to Pour it out. Give it to God. Get up. He'll get it open to heaven for you. And then you won't be sitting around with a party and the cake. But you'll say, oh my Lord, have mercy. Let me tell you what God has done for me. He healed my body, he touched my mind. He saved me in just in time of crazy. Each day is still the same. Anybody want to run? Just go ahead. I mean, you know, it's all in order. Hallelujah. 
If you're in an open heaven, how can you sit still? Like a dead piece of wood. I'm just going to sit right here and see what goes on. Well, sit there if you want to, but I'm in an open heaven. I'm in an open heaven. Why should I sit there? Why shouldn't I worship? Why shouldn't I honor God? Lord, I thank you for this message. I'm so thankful for Jay Bach, a place of total surrender. Because when you go to Jay Bach and you lay it all down, God says, get up and go on. <laughs> Just get up and go on. <laughs> So today he's trying to age brother Johnny Gold. Thank you, Lord. 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 If you understand the power of Jacob, it's not a message that just preaches good. It's not a message that causes you to feel good. It's, it's a message that's so real. That if you pour yourself out of Jacob, You'll cross over to bigger oh and better things. Ah, yes. Now, understand me when I say this. I'm going to say it to all the love I can say. Our older son, I, I know that, I, I know he's got his stuff. But God's getting a hold of him. And he called me and his mom, I mean his dad the other night, and he said, Mom, do you have time for me to read that to you about what I want to read to you, you and Daddy? Do you have time? To just, it's, it's, it's a little lengthy, but it's there I want to read to you. Uh -huh. So I've been reading Joel Osteen's book, and I, I, I want to read this to you. And so he started reading, and he started crying. And he'd read, and he'd cry. And he'd read, and he'd cry. And so every day he called me and said, How you doing, Mom? I said a little bit better. Praise God. Mom, I'm just telling you I'm praying. I know you're going to be so to heal. And out of his mouth, he said, Mom, I've been so negative. And he said, please don't feel bad at me. But he said, I know where I got that negative stuff from. He said, I know Dad, he's gone through a lot of things. And, and, and he spoke a lot of negative stuff. And, and, and he's not putting his dad down. I, I mean, it's just that he's been through a, a lot of things himself, and there's been a lot of negative stuff. And he said, and I've been speaking all that negative stuff. He said, but the word of God said there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And he said, Mom, listen to what Joel Osteen said. And he read for 30, 35 minutes, I think he was on the phone reading this to us. By the time he got through, there was such shouting going on. He's called me every single day at lunch. Mom, how you doing? I'm better, son. Well, praise God. Just say, I'm healed. Well, I didn't got that instruction from my nurse. He said, you don't want me to come down there, do you? And he put on there needles and bottles of medicine. I said, no, because I don't had all that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want none of that. I'm better, praise God. But I have felt something in this service. No wonder the Lord said just obey. Because I have felt myself feel that fire come on me, praise God. So I've been wanting and hungry for it. Waiting, that touch of your spirit. And you told to heal from the sickness and disease. Yeah. Hallelujah. Closing. It's a place of an open heaven. Access to God to get to know Him and have unspeakable joy. I believe this church is going to go places in the Spirit to an open heaven where you'll laugh again. Where you'll have such joy and get drunk in it. Pastor, I just don't see myself doing it. I know you don't. But we're praying it over you. I think, let's see, I see two wheelchairs back there. And I believe we can get some more if we need them. And wouldn't it be the talk of the town if one Sunday morning or Sunday night 
Them four or five wheelchair kids pulled out there and you just acting. Ha, ha, ha. I mean, he was drunk in the spirit. Boy, you talking about the talk of the town. They say it's something going on with those things. I mean, I see people come out of there drunk. I don't know what they're drinking. I want that so bad for this church. It's not a religious experience. It's a spiritual experience. Because we've cried enough. We've been burned down enough. We've been sick enough. It's time to cross over and have a speakable joy and a hope in everything. Stand up if you don't want to keep preaching because I'm doing it You'll be sorry that you, you asked the pastor to get back. God, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Megan, I love you, baby. Been praying, Margie. Been praying for you. Been calling you up before the Lord, and I'm I'm so proud of you. I'm blessed to have you today. Come. Hallelujah. Come, come right close to you. You're right here. Can you hear it all right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share a little bit. At eight years old, um, my mom gave me to my dad, and at that point, the devil stuck with me, and he told me that I was unworthy, that my parents didn't love me. I held on to those lies from that, oh, I don't even want to say what I think about him, but I held on to him. I'm 31 years old today, and I've went through 17 years of drug and alcohol addiction. I was that liar, I was that thief, I was that prostitute, that murderer, I was whatever that the devil had me trapped in. But I want to say two months ago, I cried before God and I said, I can't do it. Glory! And he told me, you don't have to, and when you stop trying and you let me do it, yeah. I'll do it. Oh! 